Hi you guys, Mira here, back again for another video, and today we are doing the long-awaited medical microneedling demo, which is why I have zero makeup on and my hair is back and I'm not looking the cutest, but that's okay because it's all about sanitation. I'm going to kind of just get right into it because I want this demo to be helpful for you guys and something that can be easily kind of rewatched back without a whole bunch of talking, which is why I did part one, the microneedling overview, and that's where I talk about sanitation and contraindications and the goals of microneedling and all the things you need to know before you even consider getting to this point. So definitely watch that video if you haven't already because I'm going to really just be jumping right in. And the last thing I'll add is that this is, you know, for educational slash entertainment purposes only. I'm not a doctor and I'm I'm not telling you that you okay, should do this. prep. So before you prep your skin, you know, what I recommend doing is putting your hair back, washing hands with antibacterial cleanser, and picking, you know, a clean area that's not in the bathroom, that's not in the kitchen, and, you know, go in and use a disinfecting wipe and just clean that whole surface. Once you've done that, you're gonna take something like these dental bibs and just create a little sanitary space for yourself and that's where all your supplies are gonna go. And I will link anything that I talk about in this video in the description box down below, including these dental bibs, which are on Amazon. Once you've done that, then you can begin to kind of get your supplies together. You're gonna want, you know, an antimicrobial cleanser. This is the Hibby Cleanse. You can use this on your face and your hands. You're gonna want isopropyl alcohol. So that can be the swabs or the 70%, um, you know, by itself with some sterile gauze pads, whatever your preference is. Um, you're also gonna want exam gloves. Exam gloves like these guys, which I'm gonna be put on. Of course, my hands are sanitized. You do not need to splurge on these sterile gloves if you don't want to. Uh, the recommendation for you know medical providers and dermatologists, as long as it's, you're not in surgery, exam gloves are totally fine. So that's what I follow, you know, for microneedling. The other thing you're gonna want, of course, is your microneedling tool. So that can be a derma roller, or you can use a microneedling pen, of course. And I will be using both of these tools in this video so that, you know, regardless of whether you have at home, it'll be covered in this video. You will also want um, some kind of glide if you're using a pen, or with a derma roller, you don't need glide, but I do like to apply something on the skin before and after just to kind of keep things hydrated as that fi I find that greatly helps with the healing process. Um, so that can be, you know, a topical serum like the Cause de Baja or the Timeless. You want something that has high molecular weight, hyaluronic acid, a very mild preservative, and really nothing else. Um, however, this is for topical use, right? And it's not designed for transdermal injection. So if you want to take it up a notch and be even safer, you can use a mesotherapy, you know, ampule. So this is the Hyron. This is high molecular weight HA only, it's sterile, it is designed for transdermal injections and it's a mesotherapy product. Um, so either of those is fine. Today I will be using the Celosome, which is basically like the Hyron in that it has high molecular weight HA, it's sterile, it's designed for injection. It also has a little bit of mannitol in here for added hydration. And the other thing that you'll want is a little sanitized beaker or you can use a little cup as long as the material is not porous and you've kind of checked the bottom to make sure that there's no scratches. It can kind of collect bacteria. I also like to use a little spatula to you know apply any HA that I'm applying afterwards. And again, I recommend something with silicone, not natural bristles as again, those can kind of collect bacteria. Okay, I think we've covered all the supplies. I'm gonna get right into to it. Um, I have already washed my face with the Hibby Cleanse um, and my hands. I've also sanitized my face and hands with isopropyl alcohol. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves. Something I really want to stress here, you guys, is make sure that you're very careful about contamination. Once you've put, you know, you've sanitized everything, you've put on your gloves, you don't want to be touching your hair, you don't want to be touching your clothes. You want to just stay in this sanitary space. And if you touch anything, you know, it happens. We forget you might get an itch. Make sure that you rewash your hands and put on fresh gloves if that so happens. One more, one more supply that I forgot to mention. I really like to have some sterile saline on hand. It does not have to be the sterile, the sterile saline for injection. It can be the wound irrigation one. That's totally fine. Um, it's really inexpensive. I like to use this to dilute my glide. So I'm gonna put it in here right now with my beaker and my HA. It just makes it so that that glide will last a lot longer and the HA won't get kind of sticky um, or kind of dry down and get crusty. And I also like to use this after the treatment just to remove any like crustiness 
And then at the end of the treatment, I'm actually going to use it to make a little DUI sheet mask with the HA uh, to calm things down. So in my beaker, I've added 1.5 ml of the celosome, and I've added a little bit of the sterile saline just to kind of water it down so it lasts a little bit longer and it doesn't dry down so quick. Um, my face is already sanitized. If you are acne prone or prone to purging, you're not going to needle over any active acne, right? But this would be a good time to use your high frequency wand with, you know, some sterile gloss over top to keep everything nice and sanitary. But this would be a great time to use that just to minimize the chances of purging post-treatment. So I am going to go ahead and take my little mixture here and I'm going to apply it on the section that I'm going to needle first, which is going to be my forehead. Now there is a little bit of debate, right, with with you know whether you need any serum if you're using a derma roller, which is what we're going to start with. I have dry and dehydrated skin, so I find that my skin tolerates the treatment better when I just go ahead and use the serum regardless, but you are welcome to skip it if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and begin the treatment with the derma roller, just for those of you guys who have this at home. This is a 0.5, that's really all you need unless you have very thick skin. I've also sanitized the roller, even though it's a brand new one, it should be sterile, better safe than sorry. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin. So I'm going to do the horizontal passes. And then I'm going to do the vertical and then diagonal passes. You know, some people will tell you to do the, you know, three of the horizontal, three of the vertical, three of the di diagonal. Personally, I don't do that. I do mix up the passes just to make sure that I'm evenly going over each area. But I actually go by by erythema. So I look for a nice even redness. If one area is really red and, and the other isn't, despite the same number of passes, I will go over that again. The main goal here is even redness, more so than trying to stick to a certain number of passes. Uh, the reason I say that is because the evidence indicates that uh, people do over traumatize the skin more than is needed for the result we're looking for. Also keep in mind that I'm not applying any pressure. And the reason for that is, is that you can quickly end up going much deeper than you intend. So remember pressure is going to change the depth um, that we are microneedling at and we're, you're going to end up going deeper than you need. And I will link a blog post I did on microneedling depth and why deeper is not necessarily better. So you can see I have nice even redness over half of my forehead and I'm going to go ahead and do the next part. So actually I <laughs> had to take a quick break to throw a headband on because I had one little baby hair that was in the treatment area, which meant I had to put my hair up, re and sanitize my hands and, and just put on fresh gloves. So do all this stuff before, obviously. Okay, so... I'm going to apply a little bit more of my little serum here and we're going to do the other side with the derma roller and then for the lower part of the face we will use the pen and I'll kind of explain the differences here. So same deal on this side, I'm just doing the horizontal passes and I do find that the forehead is the most sensitive area for me just because it's less padding so to speak. And I'm looking at the mirror in front of me, just if, if, if anyone is curious. You know, derm rollers kind of get a bad rap, right? Um, a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation that's mostly been put out by pen companies saying that derm rollers create rolling tears and that they're, they tear your skin up and that they're not microneedling. This is not true. You know, most of the research on microneedling actually uses a derma roller. If anything, pens are less proven. I mean, all the initial research was done with a roller. So, you know, the, the biggest thing is making sure that you get a good quality derm roller. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. You just want these individual uh, stainless steel needles, not the little discs, as they do tend to create more trauma. And you want to b both be cleansing and sanitizing the derma roller properly and replacing it often. As long as you're doing that, uh, it's perfectly fine to use a derma roller, and often I actually recommend it because this is a much lower cost to start out with. So it's better to spend, you know, the 15 bucks on this derma roller and, and really see if microneedling is for you and start with cosmetic needling, kind of work your way up. Better to start 
affordable and then invest in the pen if you, if you really like microneedling. So once I've done, you know, the passes on the forehead, I'll just kind of check and see if there's any areas that don't have that even redness. So here, a little bit on the brow, I have a little spot that didn't get covered, and then right up in here. So I'll do a couple more little passes, just, make, just making sure that I got everything. Once I've kind of put those channels down, I do like to kind of go back in with the serum. The HA can get into the skin a little bit deeper. It can help with some hydration, and I find that I get more of that post microneedling glow. It is important to note that the HA can kind of help with some hydration, but the goal is not infusion, um, unlike cosmetic microneedling, where we can use that to infuse ingredients into the skin. The goal for medical needling is always collagen induction. As we get deeper into the skin, there is a higher risk of a reaction to ingredients like foreign body granuloma, an allergic reaction. So we don't want to be trying to pack all these ingredients um, and drive them into the skin when we're medical needling. There is a higher risk and we want to be very conservative. So I am going to go ahead and start on the under eye area on each side and then I'm going to go ahead and do the pen for my lower face. So I'm going to speed this section up but you guys can kind of come along with me and then I'll slow it back down when it's time to switch to the pen. top half of my face with the 0.5 millimeter derma roller. Again, we are doing the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal passes. However, don't get stuck on a particular amount of passes. Look for that even redness. Um, and then after I did that, I went in with that salicylic and the saline mix just for some hydration. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull out my pen. This is the Dr. Pen A7. I'm going to use this for the lower part of the face. This is my favorite out of the Dr. Pen models just because I find that the cord makes the power a little bit more reliable, but most importantly is the motor power. Motor power is the most important feature in a pen in my book, as well as according to Dr. Sutterfield, as this really ensures that the pen is able to get in and out of the skin without tearing things up. So I have gone and attached the 12 count needles. Most of the research um, uses nine to 12 count needles for the pens. And also, we also know that more needles, the more pressure it takes to get those needles into the skin. So if you have too many needles, you might actually not be getting the, the accurate depth. So I use it on medium to high speed and I'm going to apply my, my glide and then go in with the pen. I actually do circles and this is because the needles are arrayed in a circular pattern. So per Dr. Sutterfield, he just recommends following the pattern of the needles. So once I turn this on, I'm going to be doing circular motions up and down. Um, and again, I'm going by even redness or erythema and more so than specific number of passes. Pen on, 0.5 depth. I'm sorry about the lighting, you guys. I feel like it's not the best. And if you guys prefer to do passes, honestly, that's fine too. You know, I don't know that it makes that much of a difference. You know, I just go off of um, Dr. Sutterfield as well as other research I've done. About a year and a half ago, I was testing a device, and that's when I started to really look up whether doing the circular motions were best or the longer passes. Um, and that's what I switched to the circular ones, and it's just my preference, but it's totally up to you guys. You know, whatever, whatever, you know, minimizes trauma and helps you kind of keep track is good. So I'm just doing motions, kind of up and down, avoiding the area I went over with the derma roller, kind of looking for an even redness. The other thing I'll add to is make sure that your pen is pointing down a little bit. If it's too far like this, what happens is the glide will get back into the needles. It won't interfere with anything, it'll just make a really annoying noise.
Also, if you feel the pen grabbing, um, definitely add more glide. If you're doing the under eye with the pen, you're welcome to do the stamping motions. This can be helpful in just areas that are super delicate, but otherwise it's totally fine to do you know, the, the passes or the circles as the um, component is already stamping up and down. gone over this whole top half with the derma roller. I did this section with the pen and then I'm, now I'm just going over any little areas that are not perfectly red. I'm sure I will refilm this video in the future when I have a better setup. But I've done this bottom section, it's nice and evenly round, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. I'm also going to do kind of underneath the jaw and the top part of the neck here, and then we will wrap it up and finish this video talking about post care. So I'm going to speed through that last part and then we will wrap it up. <laughs> finished up the lower face and the neck with the pen. So I'm going to go ahead and dispose of this guy. Again, gloves are off, but hands are sanitized. I like to keep the hands sanitized, even if I'm just handling equipment, even if it's not in use. Just you want to keep everything sanitary for future use. So I'm going to take off this guy. This is going to get disposed of in a sharps container, along with derma rollers when you're ready to dispose of them. So I'm going to unplug it and go ahead and put it away. Uh, the derma roller, you know, you, I've explained this before, but you want to soak this guy and you can use the beaker that you use for your solution. You want to soak this guy in a denture cleansing tab. This is a recommendation from Dr. Centerfield. Soak it in there for 30 minutes. The reason you don't want to just sanitize a derma roller is that the needles get accumulated skin proteins kind of built up on them. So just sanitizing is not adequate. You want to actually be cleaning those needles. So pop it in, you know, a little beaker or a little cup with a denture cleaning tab for 30 minutes and it'll be good to go for next time. All you have to do is sanitize it again before use. So as far as my skin, I have gone ahead and added a little bit more of the glide on top. Um, and what I'm going to do is I've added a little bit more saline to whatever is left in my little beaker here and I'm actually gonna pop a little um, individually wrapped uh, compressed sheet mask in there so this is this way I'm making a little sheet mask uh, full of microneedling safe ingredients just the HA and the sterile saline and I'm gonna pop that on my skin and calm things down this is a tip that I've told um, a bunch of you guys about I've been using it probably as long as I've been microneedling I just find it really helps calm things down a lot of times post needling 
things are feeling really tight and, and dry. And a lot of people want to put the products on, but that's not the safest thing until those channels close. So this really helps that and also helping with the healing process. And you're welcome to pop this in the fridge. So it's like really cooling post treatment. Just make sure that you cover it with something, keeping everything really sanitary. So that's what I'm going to do next as far as post treatment. And then I'm also going to do some red light therapy. And this is the red Mito lamp that I like. I like to do this post treatment. It's going to decrease decrease inflammation and it's going to encourage wound healing. You can also use blue light therapy again if you're prone to purging, if you're acne prone for some additional you know antimicrobial benefits there but I really like the red light for healing. And then that's actually going to be it for today. I mean you can add more of the HA like the Costa Baja if you want you're welcome to do that but that's all you want to do for that first you know 12 hours or so. Um, as far as tomorrow morning, I'm going to gently, you know, rinse with water and I'm going to go in with, you can either use more HA or you can use like a little bit of beta glucan. Either one is totally fine. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start my growth factors. Growth factors and microneedling are such a, a game changer. So that can be the bradsuticals, um, that can be the anti-age, um, any growth factor is totally fine. Tomorrow morning is when I will add back in just a high linoleic or high linolenic acid oil. This is this one is ozonized for added benefit. And of course, you know, a mineral sunscreen as well. And then tomorrow night, I will add a retinoid right back in. That could be like tretinoin if, if your skin can tolerate it. Um, or I will use something like the tre treatments, retinol with vitamin C. Again, this is very emollient, so you wanna use it the next day, not when the channels are open. Um, but you really, the, the earlier you can kind of get your skin can tolerate a retinoid and a vitamin C the better. They're really beneficial for skin post-needling. There's a lot of kind of debate about ingredients and microneedling and what's safe. You definitely want to be using very gentle preservatives, water-based ingredients, nothing emollient, nothing occlusive, and the ingredients need to be biocompatible. Dr. Sutterfield recommends just HA and saline the day of the treatment and during the treatment. If you really don't want to be that conservative, make sure that you're using ingredients that are biocompatible and kind of made for transdermal injection. I would recommend something like the cell termi products as these are just just the growth factors, no added preservatives, no added humectants, you know, super simple. Uh, another one that you can use post-treatment would be like the anti-age microneedling solution. But otherwise, you know, I would really minimize any added ingredients until the next day. If you want me to do a whole video on like the month after microneedling and all the different products and ingredients I use while my skin is recovering from my microneedling treatment, let me know in the comments below. Again, check the description box below as I have a bunch more information. We also have the guides in the Facebook community, which includes microneedling overview and protocols. I'm going to wrap this up here because I'm losing the daylight and the trains are going by and it's just one of those videos. I'm sure I will refilm this and probably do like a fancier, more in-depth microneedling demo. I just wanted something up for the meantime because I get so many questions on this um, and a lot of people wanting like an actual video demo. So we'll just call this a temporary demo for you guys and just know that more will be coming soon. Just need to kind of work on my filming space and the lighting. So more to come. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Comment below if, if there's anything specific you'd like to see. Bye guys. Oh, was beginning of love.